Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On and your regular Tuesday edition of Spurverts. Once again with Squawkers, Greg Slobart. How are you, Greg? I'm very good, thanks. Good. Obviously, uh, last, what was it? When was deadline day? Last Monday? Last Wednesday. Oh, last Wednesday. So we haven't, we haven't spoken to you since deadline day. The big news, first thing to talk about after I go through the menu, the menu is as this. First, we will talk about Musa Sissoko's signing. Second, we're going to talk about the Spurs players' performances for England. Then we're going to talk about who's going to play against Stoke. Now that we've got Sissoko, will it be him? Lamella's off uh, playing for Argentina against Venezuela on Wednesday night. Will it be Ericsson or Son even, who uh, seems to have decided to uh, choose club over country this week. Uh, then we're going to talk again about contract news. Has that moved on at all for uh, Jan, Christian and Eric Lamella? We're going to talk about Harry Kane's form. There's a stat I want to talk to you about. And finally, we'll be talking about how it's only one week away that we start our Champions League uh, run, hopefully, against Monaco at Wembley. But let's get started with the Musa Sissoko thing. Uh, we didn't really talk about it in last week's Spurverts. We had talked about it a bit off camera. Uh, obviously, Sky uh, Sports News that I was watching was saying, you know, he was going to Everton, then it happened last minute, but he seems to say he was never going to Everton. I think I actually think Sky's version is probably closer to the truth. Okay. Um, Spurs wanted him, they went for him early in the morning, they went for him the day before actually, but they didn't want to pay the 30 million. Mm. I think the hope was that at the last minute, Newcastle would see a disgruntled player, they would see 25 million maximum on the table, and they'd take the money from yeah. Tottenham. Yeah. Everton came in, put a spanner in the works, and I'm pretty sure Newcastle wouldn't have sold him to Tottenham for 25 million. So at the end, Daniel Levy and Maurizio Pochettino had to make the decision, are we going to pay 30 million pounds for Musa Sissoko? And it was Pochettino's call because he wanted him in the squad. Okay, that to me sounds like, again, another example of how Daniel Levy does listen to Pochettino, does trust in him probably more than he's trusted in a lot of managers uh, down the year. Certainly on the year when, uh, we ended up getting Ryan Nelson and Louis Sahar, Louis Sahar sorry. Uh, I know Harry wanted some bigger, better players, but Daniel wasn't really ready to push the boat out. So that's good news. Um, Sissoko, some of Sissoko's comments are, you know, I never left London and stuff like that. Is that just him trying to justify to the Spurs fans that he wouldn't have gone to Everton when he probably would? I think Spurs might have said, hold on. And I think what happened was Spurs ultimately said, we got, they made a decision earlier than reported that they were going yeah. to go for it. You know, Sky and the rest of us, you're usually a couple of hours behind yeah. what's actually happened because there's so many talks. Yeah, because all the photos moved, had been done and the medical had yeah, obviously it been moved, done. It moved so quickly. Spurs obviously got his commitment. I think they've probably been talking to Zizoko's camp for a while as well. Mm -hmm. It was one of those deals, I mean, I moaned on Twitter that Tottenham could have spent 30 million on a better player a couple of months ago, but... Such as? Mane? Sa Sadio Mane would, be, would have been the one for me. I mean, even Batshawi, I mean, he was one they wanted at the start of the window and they mm. missed out on. I know Vincent Janssen looks like he's going to be a good signing, yeah. but waiting for the end for Zizoko makes a lot of sense because he's at a championship club, they were desperate to get rid, he's kicking up a fuss. Mm. 30 million is an awful lot of money, but I don't think Spurs would have signed Musa Zizoko if the transfer window closed before the start of the season. Yeah. And I think like we talked about in previous episodes, the start of the season, you've seen, you've been missing that runner. Yeah. Without Moussa Dembele in particular, someone who can powerfully carry the ball, whether it's in central midfield, whether he's going to play out on the right or yeah. on the left, he gives him options. We know yeah. he loves a versatile player. And ultimately, it's not our money, yeah. is it? And it leaves Tottenham with a really strong squad because after all those sales, Chadley and Mason and the like, you were starting to think maybe Spurs are leaving themselves a bit short here. Yeah. Now you could name a pretty strong second string 11. The bench, in theory, will be really good. And there are players who would have thought their places were guaranteed last season, yeah. who can now be under pressure. And that includes Harry Kane and Christian Eriksen, who might have been untouchable a few yeah. months ago. No, I think that's a good point. And also, uh, I don't know about how you guys uh, have been dealing with it at home, but obviously on the day, a lot of Spurs fans, let's face it, on Twitter especially, were saying, we don't want him. Like, we don't want him. Newcastle fans hate him. A lot of Newcastle fans saying, including the true Geordie, saying, uh, you know, 30 million for him, it's an absolute, uh, but like the most amazing deal we've ever got in terms of selling a player. But for me, the way I justify it, I said it to you before, you know, you look that we got 40, basically 41 million odd in for um, Chadley, Pritchard, uh, Bentaleb's loan fee, uh, and Mason. Then to me, it feels like you can risk spending 30 on Sissoko and also Hugo Lloris, his national team captain, playing in goal behind him. You know, he can't really let up in training or on matches if he knows that, you know, Lloris will be going back to Deschamps all the time and saying, you know, Sissoko, if Sissoko doesn't want it, he'll be saying, well, don't pick him. Yeah, I think you made a couple of good points there. Firstly, in terms of the spend, 
I mean, net spend's a bit funny because you've got to factor in all the wages and that kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. but it's around 30 million pounds, which sounds about right, mm -hmm. especially when you've got a new stadium to build. Attitude-wise, we know what Pochettino is going to demand. If he doesn't do it, he's not going to play, is he? And he's been saying for years he wants to play in the Champions League. Newcastle, I know their fans think they pulled Tottenham's pants down and they're jumping for joy, but, <laughs> you know, he wasn't... He wasn't the cause of all the problems at Newcastle, was no. he? He was potentially a symptom of it, and I think he's going to knuckle down now. He's 27 as well. Yeah. So you look at the other signings, Nkudu, Janssen, you give them a year, really, don't you? They yeah. come from foreign leagues. Sissoko has come from England. In he's 27 prime. years old. He costs £30 million. He'll know he's got to hit the ground running, and you're right. If we get the Sissoko that was playing for France at the Euros, yeah. that's a 25 to £30 million pound player. Yeah. You get the player that was playing for Newcastle last year, well, he's not going to be anywhere near the team and he's going to ruin his career. No, that's absolutely right. And uh, we should mention uh, Nkudu finally got done. He seems like the happiest man in the history of the world to have signed for Tottenham Hotspur. He's good fun, isn't he? Yeah. And you like that. I always say to PR people, just let them express themselves, yeah. these footballers. It's so annoying when you get the mundane, yeah, we want to win the game quote. And yeah, some footballers are a bit boring and they just want to play FIFA and golf. But this guy's obviously got something about him. And I think fans will really connect to him. They yeah. already are. He's replying to fans on Twitter, doing all that kind of stuff. And you think about the, fan, the players that fans really love in the past, people like Sandro or Van der Vaart. It's the heart on the sleeves, no filter kind of guys. And I think Spurs fans are going to love him. Yeah. Let's hope he can do it on the pitch. Huh? Yeah, let's hope so. And uh, I'm, I'm interested. I wonder how long it'll take for Sissoko and, uh, and Kudu to get up to kind of Pochettino's match fitness levels. Because obviously... I don't know. I don't know how many games in the championship Sissoko actually played for Newcastle. None. none at all. And he was training, but he wasn't playing. So, so it's gonna. He's gonna have to have a pre-season, really. Yeah. Likewise, and kudu has been training for a while, but on his own, he's not been involved in any pre-season friendlies or any mm. of that. Likewise, Sissoko played at the Euros, should be fairly fit, but he's been training on his own away from the first team at Newcastle, which is why I don't expect either of them to start against Stoke at the weekend. Okay, interesting. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, obviously, it's an international week, which inherently is mostly boring, uh, but a lot of Spurs players did play. Danny Rose, Kyle Walker, Eric Dyer, and Harry Kane started um, against Slovakia. What did you make overall? I thought the fullbacks firstly played very well. Yeah, I thought Danny Rose was excellent. Yeah. One mistake, one mm -hmm. bad mistake as well could have cost them, but up and down. It looked like they were told to hold back a little bit more than that the Euros, where Carl Walker in particular yeah. was bombing forward, but they were both very solid. Eric Dyer kind of controlled the game. I mean, a lot of debate about Wayne Rooney. He was kind of getting in Dyer's way. Yes, to be I felt he really was. Dyer could have done that anyway. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's so like, bizarre. I found well, that so bizarre. Why is Rooney going into the space where Dyer can play a simple 10-yard yeah. pass and yeah. keep the game ticking on? It was a bit weird because what we what you like with Dyer, and you kind of saw it when Deli Ali came on, his real strength, what Pochettino likes about him, is when he can get the ball and he zips it between the lines yeah. really quickly yeah. and there's a sort of number 10, there's a flow to you. Yeah. And at Tottenham, all three of them move in, don't they? And that's, so that's where Rooney should have been. It doesn't make any sense. And and also why, uh, I mean, we'll come on to Harry Kane, but why when Deli Ali came on, I felt he changed the game. Oh, Deli Ali was excellent. I mean, technically he wasn't perfect. A couple mm. of times dodgy first touch, but he was in the right places. He was getting the ball in the half turn. Yeah. He was driving, he was running with the ball. He was trying to make things happen. A couple of really nice passes and touches. Certainly, he came on against 10 men. Yeah. Let's not forget. That's and they true. would get tired. It's a great time to bring on a player like that. Yeah. But he was where Wayne Rooney was supposed to be yeah. for the previous 70 odd minutes. Mad. And I think that's why you'd say now Deli Ali has to be a starter, which potentially means all five of them in the first Yeah, level. and the other thing I just want to say while I remember it is I was out in Germany in Munich when we, um, was it Munich? No, in Berlin, sorry. When England beat them in the last minute, Dyer scored the last minute header. And that game, Rooney wasn't playing. And it was Dyer and Henderson who looked good in that game and Ali in front of them. And there was just more legs. And, and I feel like there's a, I know this is getting a bit off Spurs topic, but I feel there's an element of those players around who feel like they have to give it to Rooney. Yeah. When, he, when he's there coming into centre-back or picking it off his centre-back. It's like, it's unnecessary. Yeah, and it doesn't bode well that Sam Allardyce says he can play where he wants as well. And you're right, that was England's best performance in the last three or four years, yeah. probably. And Dele Alli was exceptional that night. Yeah. They, they had the pace, they had the power, they were all in the right spot. And Rooney just wandering around, getting the ball off the centre-back, does absolutely nothing. Mm. And we'll probably come on to this. It leaves Harry Kane isolated. really isolated. Yeah, um, so yeah, let's go on to that. Uh, obviously, Harry, we'll talk more about this stat that I've got later, but uh, not always the quickest of starters in the season. But um, he did look incredibly isolated. And, and that... And, People are so quick to get on his back for some reason. It's like because he's, I don't know what it is, because he's been successful, people who aren't Spurs fans are desperate to see him like prove them right in a way. It's a weird one because he's always been a player who 
doesn't look like he should be that good if it makes yeah. any sense yeah, at no, all. No, do you know what I mean? I think that was kind of why Spurs fans loved him because mm. he just made the absolute most of what he's got. But mm. he can't do anything if no one's making yeah. chances for him. Yeah. It's been the same for Tottenham at the start of the season as well. And he was poor. Yeah. He's been poor. I think his first touch is letting him down a little bit. He looks a little yard off the pace, maybe even a little bit too heavy. Okay. He looks a bit sluggish, I think. Mm-hmm. He's try- can't really get away from defenders, but you know with Harry Kane, he saw it last year. Yeah. As soon as the first one goes in, yeah, that's exactly right. he'll be fine. And, you know, there was that chance in the first half of the England game where he completely miskicked the ball. Yeah. Air in, shot. In a, you know, at the weekend, he might slam that into the top corner and yeah. then he's off and running, scoring a goal a game. But again. also, it just feels, it, it's pro- it feels to me more likely he needs one to go in off someone's arse. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the first goal he scored last season, which was against City at home, the free kick yeah, it hit the, the bar, it came to him, and he didn't have enough time to think, oh, I'm going to miss this. So he yeah. half volleyed it and it went into the top corner. So let's hope that happens at Stoke away, which brings me on nicely to um, who are we going to pick in those three behind uh, Harry, presumably, uh, against Stoke? Um, Eric Lamella, I think he's playing away in Venezuela and he's on playing Wednesday too. night. He's going to play as well. Okay. So. By the time he gets back. Is that a new manager, a new Argentinian yeah, yeah. manager? Fancies apparently, him? apparently they don't like him. He's playing instead of Messi. What? Messi's having a rest, I think. Even though he's just come out of international Pre- retirement? Presumably. I don't know the entire story, but apparently Lamella's going to be playing. So Re- that means presumably the latest he would get back is like Thursday night. Yeah, he's not going to... So I doubt he'll train on Friday. Saturday, Saturday 3pm. So that, I think, might open up an opportunity now. Christian Eriksen has had a bit of a slow start, uh, but he did score um, yeah. for Denmark. Missed a pen, but did score a goal in a 1-0 win for Denmark. I think he'll play realistically. Sissoko, you've said already, you don't think he'll play. So this this Hungman Son, having come back from international duty, do you think Pochettino might have had a word in his ear and said, look, we're going to need you against Stoke? I think he would have made that decision himself anyway. Mm. It's pretty disappointing that he had to go. You can understand why he went to the Olympics, but mm. you felt like it would be a big year with a pre-season for him. He started to show some signs last season, scored against in the Chelsea, in the Chelsea game, game for, yeah. for example. He's a great finisher, I have yeah. to say. And they've got high hopes for him, and he was started slowly. And you kind of, a bit like we were saying about Nkudu earlier, you give them a year, really. Yeah. He's had a year to settle in now, yeah. and now it's a really big time for him. Fair play, didn't didn't play. I mean, they were playing Syria, so he probably didn't fancy it yeah, too yeah. much anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think he'll start. He's been involved. He was on the bench for the Liverpool game, mm-hmm. but apparently he was too tired yeah. to play. And he, emotional. He was very emotional after the Olympics. Did you hear yeah. Poch talking about that? He cried for a day, his agent said, as well. Yeah. So, uh, Bless him. He's I such th- a nice boy. I think it's a good opportunity for him. He's a good character as well. Yeah, he is, yeah. I think, you know, he's been on the training ground for a week or so now you would imagine that he'll come straight in for Lamella, like okay. for like, and show what he's got. All right, great. Let's move on to contract news again. A few little uh, whisperings on social about us now after deadline day, trying to tie these up. Uh, talking about Jan Vertonghen, obviously Ericsson, and Lamella. Um, yep. Does that sound about right to you? And Harry Kane as well. Yeah, so talks of him getting a new 120,000, something like that, to become 000, the top earner. Yeah, 100,000. So Pochettino's been saying, it's not a secret, he's been saying every press conference when I go, after transfer window shuts, we're going to look to tie them all down. At the moment, we're really busy, we're preoccupied. But as soon as the transfer window shuts, we'll okay. get them all done. Didn't Harry sign like three new deals last year? Yeah, he did. But the guy earns thirty-five thousand pounds a week. Still now. Yeah, so he deserves. Wow. He deserves. He deserves wow. a big contract. Yeah. And, you know, Sizoko's coming in on seventy-five thousand. So time to pay him what he deserves to earn. Okay. I don't think they're worried about any of them. Obviously, the Ericsson one is the one you want to tie down the most because. Value, two years down. His value is starting to depreciate yeah, now yeah. because he's going into the last two years of his contract. So I think that's one they'll try and get done as a priority. I haven't really heard much about it. Last I heard, they're not really worried. They're pretty confident they'd all get yeah. tied up. And these things take time. They've been negotiating with all of them for a year or so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any rush. Okay, and so I know from back in the days, I think of Ledley and stuff, that there are certain players who have deals where they have to match, their deal has to match the top earner at the club. Who has that? Does Hugo have that, for instance, or does Daniel just refuse to do that at the moment? No one has that. Interesting. I wonder if anyone will, when any of them will ask for that. Okay, uh, we're going to go back onto Harry Kane's form a little bit now. This stat that I'm talking about is that he has never, ever scored a league goal before the 26th of September. And of course, he's been, uh, you know, his top goal scorer last year, and he scored 30 goals the year before. Be good for him to get an early one this time against Stoke, wouldn't it? Get him started. Yeah, I mean, we've only got two years to work on with that one. And last year was very slow. Mm, and but on year... loan at places, he'd never done it either. Really? Well, that's I quite, believe so. That's quite interesting. You're right. You said earlier he's a slow starter. He does look off the pace. It's a weird one because once he gets going, yeah. like, you know, the workload... He it's went... like the weight lifts off his shoulders yeah. and he does look a lot fitter all of a sudden. He works yeah. harder. Or and it's like... The adrenaline comes or whatever, he's, yeah. In both the last two seasons, he's still got through an enormous workload as yeah. well. You know, last year he was the only striker. He played every bloody game. Yeah. 
And he'd been at the under-21s in the summer as well. Exactly. So it's not like physically he can't handle it at all. I fancy him to score at the weekend, to be honest. Like you said, he so. just needs to slam one. He needs to either moment of magic yeah. or scramble one in off the line. Yeah. And then he'll get going. And remember last year, the Bournemouth scored a hat-trick yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, I was then, at that know, game. It was magic. You know, once he, he scored against City, he scored against Bournemouth, and then he's off. Yeah, and... Um, he scored an absolute rasper uh, at uh, Stoke back end of last season. Yeah. That first one, bent, just like the Arsenal one, bent into the far corner. One thing I'd say about Harry Kane as well, at least there's another option now. Yeah. There's another option. It's true. Janssen looks sharp. I like, it. I like his movement. He looks like he's more likely to have a goal in him at yeah, the moment, he to, does, be, yeah, to he be, does. be honest, than Harry Kane. And I think Kane will start at the weekend, but it's a really good option to say, look, take him out of the firing line. It's, why, it's a weird one for Pochettino as a manager. Do you... Could he do it... Could he potentially do it on Saturday knowing that we've got Monaco home on Wednesday? Well, that's part of having a strong squad, isn't yeah. it? That's what he's been saying. It's not just about putting pre players under their pre under pressure for their plays yeah. in the first team. It's also being able to rotate the squad because we saw him do it only really with the full-backs last year. Yeah. But yeah. now he can do it with the striker. He can do it with the wide men or the central yeah. midfielders even. So there's a potential there. I mean, Janssen's been playing for Holland as well, but there's potential we might give Janssen 90 minutes at the weekend and then Kane starts against Monaco. Which brings us on nicely. It's one week uh, and a day till Monaco at home at Wembley. I still haven't got my tickets, but only because I'm desperate to try and get two tickets together so I can take my best mate as a his wedding gift. That's not interesting to you guys. But They're anyway. on general sale now, though. They are, but you still it's still one ticket for one member, isn't it, I think? No, it's general sale. And you okay, can I, knew, I knew there was a reason this morning I couldn't get on the bloody website. Um, have you got your ticket? How do you feel about it? Will Wembley affect us in that it'll allow Monaco to be more motivated to come and play and will we struggle there, dare I say it in the same way Woolwich did when they played there about 15 years ago in their Champions League group? Yeah, I'll be going, I'll be in the press box actually. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm thanks, a little bit worried. Invite, Greg. I think Spurs will be alright, I think Spurs will be alright in the group stage because it's a lovely group, yeah. it's a nice group and you'd think that they'll be able to get through the group and get a glam tie yeah. in the knockout stages. It will affect them, a lot of it depends on the atmosphere, I know they're trying to do a lot of stuff to they told certain, they told support there's a singing area yeah, and yeah, a home yeah. end or whatever, all that kind of stuff. But I remember those Arsenal games, and you're right, teams do go do get motivated when they go there. You see it with international teams as well, even mm -hmm. when they come and play England. Huge stadium, really historic. Doesn't have the feel of White Hart Lane, the tightness. You think back to the Inter Milan game, yeah. for example, the AC Milan game, the yeah. tightness of White Hart Lane, the lights, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're not really going to get that. So I think Spurs will be fine in the group stage. But certainly, if they get into knockout stage and then a Barcelona or a Juventus or Real Madrid come, yeah. they won't have as much to worry about as at White Hart Lane. That's true. So we turned Monaco over, I think, 4-0, was it, at home in the Europa League last year? And we, yeah, I, we drew, drew out in away. Monaco. Um, were they playing... Cause Spurs had rotated a lot. I mean, this is an interesting thing as well. We will be rotating a lot less in Europe in European weeks this year than we did last year. Like you said, both the fullbacks would change and, and Tom Carroll would come in and Ryan Mason would come in. Um, but were Monaco playing a second string as well? Have they improved a lot since then? It certainly looks like they've improved. They beat Paris Saint-Germain the other week. Yeah. And you assume PSG will run away with the French title yeah. by 20 points every year. So if they're beating them... They must have a pretty decent side. I did see David Luiz's tackle in that in that game <laughs> yeah, for the penalty yeah. though, and uh, oh, it was shocking, wasn't it? Unbelievable. And they've got a couple of good players. Falcao's Falcao's playing back, again. Yeah. Uh, the Fabinho, the right back, who Man United have been trying to yeah. buy. Moutinho. Moutinho's who, still a good player, yeah. although he he didn't play great against us last year. But yeah, I think Spurs. If they it's one, it's a classic one. If they play the English style, yeah. the Pochettino style as yeah. well, the high intensity, the pressing, you'd think that they'd rush Monaco and they'd have too much energy for them. Almost, yeah. I think that's how how you're going to beat them. Okay, let's hope so, guys. Let us know in the comments box below. What do you think is going to happen against Monaco next week? How do you feel about Musa Sissoko? Have your feelings changed since deadline day where maybe everyone was a bit neg about it? I've certainly found a way to think this could be really exciting because also I'm remembering how both times we played against him last year and the last few times, actually, he's done damage against us. He, was he loves monstrous playing in the against one, us. Yeah. <laughs> he was horrible to play against. So let's hope he does that uh, for Spurs, although Greg doesn't think it'll be from this Saturday onwards and he's probably right, I'd say. Anyway, let us know what you thought about it all in the comments box below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Spurred On TV and Facebook at Spurred On. And, of course, go to Squawker where Greg's reports are second to none. Most importantly, come on your Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is our regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learn. And of course this week, it's from the Tottenham Hotspur. One, Liverpool won game. Now this one I couldn't be at.